Hi there, and welcome to GM Tips. This is GM Rick coming at you. Um, now, I had a couple complaints about um, earlier audio when I first started out, and I apologize for that. Some of my audio in the early days, I was using the computer uh, mic, so a lot of times you wouldn't be able to hear me that well. So what I'm going to rehash here is the vigilantes. You can see them on the front of the page from the Ultimate Intrigue. And really just some key pointers to playing it and the types of things you can do with the vigilante that uh, you may not be aware about. Again, the vigilante is an interesting individual. The vigilante is somebody who grew up out of need in an area or in a country, kind of like... Um, and in olden day, Batman, Superman, Robin Hood, you could pick the different characters that were vigilantes back in the day. But these were people who felt like the current justice system didn't afford them what they needed. Or they were helping to enforce a new justice system that they hadn't been able to work with. So the vigilante is that type of class. Now, one of the key features that I love about the vigilante that I think each player will love as well is the dual identity. A vigilante has two identities, and they can often keep the other identity very hidden. So you could be a noble, you could be a bard, you can be a rogue or a thieves guild leader. You could be a captain of the guard. You could be a high noble in the council. You could be a leader of an area. So a vigilante affords you that dual identity, and people will know you more for that other identity than they will for the vigilante one. You have a, a clear delineation between the two. And often the character acts differently in each different persona. So keep that in mind. So you've got the dual identity factor that comes in. Now, vigilantes really are interesting because they're not only proficient with simple weapons but martial weapons as well. So they make them almost a build but somewhere between a rogue and a fighter but they're really not. They're very uniquely different than both and that's the interesting thing. We've had a lot of blends if you remember from the advanced class guide. This is something very unique on its own and and the writers really did a great job on this. Um, one of the writers that I talked to a lot, and this this kind of was his baby, um, was uh, Mark Sefter. And Mark is really the, if you ever want to ask a lot of questions on the vigilante, keep that in mind. He is the guy that you really want to talk to at Paizo regarding this class because it's his baby, and he has worked hard on it. Not that Jason Bowman wasn't involved. Jason's a great guy, too. Often maybe a little tougher to get because he's the boss of everybody, and, including Mark. So Mark is really a great go-to and loves to talk about it. So keep that in mind. And you can find him both on um, on Facebook and on the Paizo website. So keep that in mind. Now, again, one of the other things is the class skills. They have a great amount of class skills that really go with this. So it, it really enhances what a vigilante can do. Now, in the beginning, you get to specialize on what type of vigilante you want to be. And that's really, I think, a, a great part of it is that you can really sit down and figure out what do you want to be. Do you want to be more stealthy or do you want to be more of the strong, powerful, let's bring it on type of vigilante? And so the two, and, and really... The biggest differences between the specialization, and, and I'll give you the two types that they talk about, are the uh, the the builds between the um, uh, here we go vigilante specialization, either an Avenger or a Stalker. So your Avengers are your Superman types, or your Hulk types, or just your brute. They're more of a brute martial force that comes in, whereas a Stalker type sticks more to the shadows and it sticks to things that are not easy to find. Um, so they're more stealthy, they're more in the shadows, they work in the shadows, they attack from the shadows. So again, it gives you that Batman-esque type of feel. But again, we're not talking about playing necessarily superheroes because these can be super villains as well. They don't have to be a good guy. They can be neutral, they can be evil. They're there because they simply do not believe the current structure of society is helping to bring about the changes that they would like to see. You get a lot of vigilante talents. If you take a look at the, the chart there and going up, the vigilante talents are very common. And the nice thing, too, is that you start beginning to get a plus one to your attack 
but base attack at second level. And you can go to multiple attacks by the time you're at eighth level. So it is really a mix between a rogue and a fighting type when it comes to that. Um, they are very reflex oriented, which is much more like the rogue as well as will save. Fortitude, they're okay. They're not the highest when it comes to fort saves. But again, with this type of character, you're not necessarily looking at that. Plus, you can stack it on whatever your alter identity is as well. So keep that in mind. You want to take some class levels somewhere else and not just go straight vigilante with these. Um, I love the seamless guys because it really lays it out. And this is what I'm saying with that dual identity. A vigilante knows how to behave in such a way that appears perfectly proper and normal for his current identity. So there is not even a hint of doubt as to who you are. And you get a plus 20 circumstance bonus to appear as your current identity when using disguise. So it's huge. And, and this comes, um, the seamless comes at first level. So already from the very beginning, you are hard to detect as what you are. Just keep that in mind. Now, um, social talents. You can pick up all kinds of different social talents. Um, and there's a lot of really great ones. I love the case, the joint, um, the celebrity discount, where because you're, you are a celebrity in your other persona, they give you discounts off of things that you need, like food and other things and places to stay. You get the celebrity perks. Um, double time. Uh, the vigilante social identity is of a skilled or respected artisan or professional rather than a merchant or noble. So you can be someone that's of the lower caste as well. You don't have to be an upper caste member. Every man it allows you to blend in that people can't tell you from the crowd, which is a great disguise. Um, feign innocence. You can really just pretend that, hey, it, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And people will believe you because it gives you bonuses for that. Uh, Gossip Collector gives you extra perks for gathering information, and you can do it in minutes versus hours, which is really huge. Because a lot of times we, we as GMs play it faster, but really gather information takes hours for players to do. Um, great Renown. You are known in places of larger uh, places um, where larger towns or cities. So you're, you're more renowned. Um, an immediate change. I love that one. So you're running as a vigilante from somebody, and then you do a quick flip into your other guys, and no one can tell the difference. Um, it gives you, uh, you, need, you don't need to spend the extra time. It's just immediate that you flip into where they can't tell who's who. Uh, so again, you can get things like instant recognition, many guises, uh, mockingbird, quicks change. Um, so there's a lot of things that really go with the persona side of things. And I love that because it helps you to blend in socially. And you've got to remember that. A vigilante, because of ultimate intrigue, is much more of a social critter. So you get a lot of abilities that you don't get with a fighting class. You can start using skills to be your major breadwinner for what you do and who you are. And you use attacks just when necessary to take care of business. I love the fact of social combat with one of these guys. You can go into a social combat and, you know, it's just as effective as having a, a sword battle or something else in, in gaining things, whether it's gaining boons or gaining recognition or gaining other things. So, Now, one of the other things is with the vigilante specialization is the vigilante talents you get towards those. Really take a look into the vigilante talents. There are a lot of great talents, and that was one of the things I went through the last time. Um, I love certain things with these. So a blind spot. The vigilante is so skilled with stealth, he can use his stealth skill to hide from creatures with unusual senses that normally detect creatures, so like undead, things that can detect life signs. You can blend in and hide from them. That is a huge deal. Um, you have to be six level or above. So again, the level things fly into there. But think about this: how in, how just super special is it to be able to evade and hide from creatures that you normally couldn't? Um, a chase master. So you know whether you're a pursuer or pursued, you're best at the chase, and so you can use um, during bonus checks during 
bonuses to your checks, either whether it be survival to track somebody or something else, you get half your vigilante or plus four what is greater. So when you're lower levels, you automatically get a plus four to chasing people. That's huge. You think about that. You can track down some of the most stealthy characters uh, and, and bad guys around. And that's a huge deal when you're doing that. Because remember, that one blown roll can, can be hours until you find that person or more. So now you're really taking control of the situation. Uh, combat skill. You can gain some... Um, uh, you, you have the prerequisite. You must. Uh, it says the vigilante gains one combat feat as a bonus feat, but you got to meet the prerequisites. So you gain an extra bonus combat feat that you can get from that combat skill. Um, expose weakness. The vigilante is able to use sneaky tricks to make it much easier to damage a foe, whether it is throw a bit of fine dust, uh, cold iron over a, a fey creature, or melting a glob of silver into the lycanthrope's hide. Basically, um, uh, the Vigilante can add the ability to reduce the creature's damage reduction or hardness by 10 from the listed options when attempting a dirty trick check. <laughs> Again, huge deal when you're trying to overcome a, D a DR on a creature. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, some other ones. I love the hide in plain sight. That is one of the best things. And you get it 8th level that you just blend in and no one knows you're there. Beautiful thing. Um, an inspired vigilante. So the vigilante's powers of deduction are far beyond the norm. The ability focus is similar to the investigator. So you get the investigator's ability to be inspired when it comes to certain skills. Great, great thing right there. Uh, Fist of the Avenger. The vigilante gains an improved unarmed strike. So you're much like the uh, monk so you see where they're blending in different abilities to this, this class that's just amazingly fun. Lethal Grace. The Vigilante combines strength and speed into incredible deadly attacks. He gains Weapon Finesse as a bonus feat, and if he already has Weapon Finesse, he can immediately swap it for another feat. I love these immediate swaps. So you took Weapon Finesse at first level, but then you gained this. So now you get to swap it for a whole new feat. See how much fun this is? Uh... And again, a lot of fun. And 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 again, one of the other things that it has, when using weapon finesse to make a melee attack using dexterity bonus on attack rolls and the strength bonus on damage, he also adds half his vigilante level to the damage. Now you're much more damaging. Um, Mighty Ambush. Once per round, the vigilante succeeds in a hidden strike. He immediately... Um, he can instantly drop the damaged enemy unconscious for 1d4 rounds. A successful fort save negates it. But man, imagine dropping your opponent to unconscious, what that affords you to do. Nothing can stop me. Once per round, while the vigilante is moving, he can make an attack as a free action against an unattended object in the way of his path, such as a door or table. So now you're kicking through a door as a free action, which normally would take a move action. Again, lots of funny things. They got returning weapon. They've got um, shield of fury and silent dispatch. Love silent dispatch. So this one's a great one. When the vigilante ambushes an enemy and strikes unaware of, uh, and and the enemies are unaware of his presence, he can attempt the stealth check in a minus five penalty. The result indicates the DC of perception checks to hear the vigilante's attacks during the opponent's first action. So, in other words, he hits you so fast, you didn't even hear where he came from. And they've got things like unshakable, startling appearance, frightening appearance. The vigilante as a whole is just a very strong class, and there's a lot of ways you can differentiate it and go with it. Plus, they got the archetype builds that go along with that. So, keep in mind, this class is unlike any other class. It is. It has abilities out of each one that makes it very unique and really blends them in such a way that makes sense. So let's look at some of the vigilante archetypes, shall we? So here's some of the ones that are really unique and, and there's more but mind you that have come out in the heroes of are the horror adventures and the occult one, or actually not the occult but the horror adventures ones. 
So I'm just going to give you the ones that are out of here. Um, na, 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 na. Okay, so where are they? Other class archetypes. All right. Oh, the Wild Soul, the Psychometrist. Yeah, they've got a lot of different ones that they have under the different classes, so you can add a lot. Uh, the ones that I do like that have come out of this book that, that can add on to these different things, um, the Velvet Blade for the Slayers. You can infiltrate upper echelons. The Gray Paladin. So finally they got the Gray, the gray um, Warden or the Gray Guard. They, they were able to build that into a build. Um, the Secret Broker, the Intrigue with the Occultist, the Black Asp for the Monk type. Um, so all these come out of that type of things. The Tyrant for the Anti-Power, the Maverick uh, for the Gunslinger. Trouble always finds a Maverick, whether she is a con artist or honest gambler. Quick with her gun and, and no stranger to barroom brawls, she can hold her own when bullets and punches start flying. Love these things. The roof runner for the heart for the hunter. So there's a lot of different archetypes that really are in there. So for the vigilante, they've got the brute. So the brute literally is brute force. Uh, either through results of magical experimentation or bizarre natural sparks, some vigilantes can go into Hulk type of characters. Hmm, sound familiar? The Cabalist. Love the Cabalist. Um, appearing to be an upstanding member of society, the Cabalist clandestinely follows attendance of a secret society and practice blood sacrifices. For, so for the evils, nasty, nasty. The Gunmaster. There it is. The Gunmaster. Firearms can be potent tools for striking fear into the hearts of enemies, and can, uncan, our uncanny vigilantes use them to their advantage. Gunmasters brandish firearms like extensions of their will, taking down their foes with deadly accuracy. So they get Dead Eye, Death Shot, Gunmaster Initiate, ra, uh, Lightning Reload, which um, a number of times per day equal to the vig, half the vigilantes' level. A Gunmaster can reload a single barrel of a one-handed or two-handed firearm as a swift action. Quick clear, same type of thing. Your gun's broken, you can do it as a swift action. So, again, and they have nimble. So the magical child. Vigilantes, no matter their age, carry a spark of capricious whimsy um, under which flows the powerful current of magical and wonder. So you get some limited spell casting and transformation. I love how they show the little child with the cat doing that. Uh, the Mounted Fury. Vigilantes form special bonds with creatures they use as steeds and consider them loyal and trusted. So like uh, the Lone Ranger and Trigger. Uh, the Psychometrist. Why is vigilantes know that there's a certain seeming, um, that in certain seemingly unremarkable items, uh, psychometrists aren't spellcasters. Instead, they collect strange items or create their own uncanny gadgets. So kind of like Batman or Doc Strange. The Warlock, there is Doc Strange right there. Um, so you are the Warlock type, or the Wild Soul, that, um, you know, you become the Wild Child, kind of like Beast, or the Zealot. So there's several different ones that you can really pick on the archetypes that give you some other ones. And, and again, Horror Adventures gives you some really bizarre ones. So keep in mind, there's some other ones that will come out from that one, in fact... Let me grab it for you, and I can tell you what these are. So, grabbing my book, Horror Adventures. So what about the Vigilante archetype? Well, let's see. What do they give them? <laughs> I love these kind of books. They just give you so much fun. All right, so the Vigilante, the Experimenter. you got to be able to experiment. Um, the Hangman. Whenever the guilty walk free, the Hangman brings judgment. Or the serial killer, for the, for you and the evil type. Um, they look innocent to cloak their acts of brutal murder. It's a fun class. A lot of abilities and builds. You can do your own if you want. I just love the fact that it is something very different than what we've gotten class-wise. 
and it makes a very unique it allows you to pull in you know a lot of people want to play the superhero characters in in Pathfinder or D&D now you have that ability with the vigilante now you can play this and be able to do the things that you've wanted to do for a very very long time so keep that in mind going forward as you as you look at this class if you got questions, please hit me up on them. I love the Vigilante. I'll go through it with you. Mar but I'm going to tell you right now, Mark Safter is the guy to go to, or Jason Bowman is a backup. Those two know this class inside and out. They created it. I've had questions that I've taken to them. They've answered them in seconds because they're the creators of this class. And if you watch the other videos on this, people are raving about the Vigilante. And that's one class that, you know, as, as you've been with Pathfinder a while, you know that there's been ups and downs at points with people feeling towards the game. This class eliminates a lot of negatives. It really brings back into focus the ability to play a class that allows you to play an intrigue character class that matches the intrigue. So going into the recent ones and, and the Chelish ones, so uh, either... Um, Hell's Rebels or Hell's Vengeance, perfect place to play this if you want to play it in an adventure path. Even in the new Strange Aeons, great place to play it with a mix of your occult classes. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. Keep in mind and really go after it. I would, I would always lead with a Vigilante class as my first level and then take my alternate persona as the next level and then build it just a little bit so maybe I get one or two levels in my alternate persona because you want to have enough influence to make people think you are that other class even though that this class will help you to do that and have some of those abilities that no one really knows and then build up your vigilante after it and you won't regret it it really becomes fun so whether it be an aristocrat levels whether it be levels in bard rogue um, investigator Whatever you want to split in, whatever your, your GM allows you to run with, this is the thing that you really want to use. Now, 5e folks, you really want to get this book and convert it. I'm telling you, for a 5e class, this would change 5e in a lot of ways. You're going to have to come up with how these things will, will blend into the new skills and ease of combat system, but it makes for a beautiful build. It really does. If someone hasn't already done it, then do it. Be the person that innovates that and brings that about in your home brews. Thanks again, folks. I hope this clears up on the audio, and I hope it makes it a better uh, discussion than what my other one was. So I'm going to call this one uh, Vigilante re re uh, Remix. Let's just call it Remix with sound so you guys can hear it. All right? Thanks, and have a great morning, and have a great week playing and gaming.